Hello, I'm Ward Brown, Chairman of the Investment Committee at Argent Capital Management, and I'm here with Kirk McDonald's Portfolio Manager of our mid-cap strategy. And we wanted to walk through what we're seeing out of the market as we get to the end of the year, but then more importantly, what we're seeing as we move into 2022. In addition to Kirk's mid-cap strategy, our large cap value dividend select strategy are both available on the SmartX platform, and we hope you'll check those out. At Argent, we look at stocks from an individual earnings or fundamentally based perspective, but clearly the macro has a giant influence as well. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Kirk to see what he's seeing from the top down side of the world. Great. Thanks, Ward. So this first slide pretty well sums up my presentation. While the leading economic index is slowing down, it's slowing down from record high territory and the decline is likely to be measured and stop well short of a recession. And overall, the setup for the stock market is positive in 2022. And while it's very difficult to know which direction the stock market may be headed, we can have a pretty good idea of where the leading economic index is headed. And that's because the LEI is a very good leading indicator for the U.S. economy. It leads it by about six months. And there's several longer term leading indicators that give us an idea of where the LEI is headed. And a lot of people don't know this, but the stock market also happens to be one of the best predictors of the U.S. economy and leads the economy by about six months, the same as the leading economic index does. And so what are some of the pieces of the puzzle that help drive that? Okay, there's about six things I'll walk you through today. The first of those is the growth rate of the money supply. And that leads the LEI, or leading economic index, by about six months. And the growth rate of the money supply is rapidly slowing down from record high territory. And that's because the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank flooded the U.S. economy with money during the pandemic in order to try to keep the economy moving forward. That's no longer needed, so the growth rate of the money supply is slowing down. But it's still at a very healthy level, indicating we'll stop short of a recession in 2022. The next thing we'll look at is China's economy, and that leads the LEI by about six months. China's economy is also slowing down from very high rates of growth, but still at comfortable growth territory, levels that we would be very happy with in this country. So that's the, first indi the second indication that the economy will continue to slow through 2022, but stop short of a recession. The next thing we'll look at is the growth rate of manufacturing output here in the United States. That's also slowing down, but slowing down from record high territories. And on the next slide I'll show you, that's likely to continue to slow because inventories, the line in red here, are moving up rapidly the past couple of months. So the supply chain problems and things like that that we've been hearing a lot about are starting to normalize. Inventory levels are coming back to normal. So manufacturing output will continue to slow, most likely, through 2022. The last two things we'll talk about involve interest rates, and they're a very good sign that the economy will not go into a recession in 2022. The first one is the U.S. 10-year Treasury yield is moving higher. And that's a very good thing. It shows there's demand for money out there, that companies need to borrow money to grow their business, and individuals are also borrowing money. So that shows that they're optimistic about the economy in 2022. And the last thing I'll show you is bond spreads. And that's the extra yield or interest that investors and companies need to pay above and beyond what the U.S. government pays for their loans. And those bond spreads are shrinking. They're getting, they're getting lower. So that means that lenders are very optimistic about the economy in 2022 and think that companies and individuals will be able to pay their loans back. So overall, the setup is positive for the stock market. The economy is likely to slow down, but still stay at growth rates that are healthy for stock market growth in 2022. That's great, Kirk. Thanks very much. You know, at any given time, there's always a list of pros and there's a list of cons. And then there's some things we're not quite sure about. But fortunately, right now, we feel really good about the pros. So if you look at the market this year, it's, it's clearly had a fantastic year. Throughout the year, we've been making new all-time highs. But as a real good signpost for a healthy bull market is where is that strength coming from? And it's, and it's exactly where you want to see it. So, so you're seeing semiconductor stocks at new all-time highs and housing stocks at new all-time highs and a bunch of consumer retail names and, and banking stocks and other tech names. And, and so you're getting strength from where you want to see it. That's been a feature and it's continued to be a feature. Right now, you know, you've had the market come off a little bit, but fortunately it's coming from areas that have been the frothiest. So it's not the worst thing in the world to see some of those super high flying names come back down to earth a little bit. Driving the market more than anything else has been phenomenal earnings growth, right? Earnings have been, have been fantastic. Clearly that was easy to do coming out of COVID when they were reduced to basically nothing. So earnings growth looked great compared to that. And it gets a little tougher when you're comparing to the growth that we saw coming post COVID. But nonetheless, we are expecting earnings growth to continue next year and beyond. And that's exactly what you wanna see. That's being driven by a couple things. One is a consumer who is in really good shape, right? That's coming from two places. It's a very strong job market and consumers are being paid more. 
consumer-oriented economy, and they are spending their money. Wallets are open, and they're using it. We also have companies in very good shape. Corporate balance sheets are in very good shape. Kirk mentioned the credit market, and companies can go out right now, and they can borrow money for very little, and they can turn around and invest that money in their business. They can pursue M&A. They can buy back their stock. They can issue dividends. The credit market has been a tailwind, and it's still a tailwind for equities right now. So, so obviously, companies are dealing with some labor shortage issues and supply chain and transportation costs. We've seen some of that. And yet, profit margins are at the highest level they've ever been, right? And, and, and that's fantastic. So they're sort of talking out of both sides of their mouth. And that's because demand is very high. Companies are worried about a lot of things, but they aren't worried about sales. And that's allowed them to drive profit margins to a higher level than they've, than they've ever been. So companies are earning a lot of money. Consumers are in a really good spot. But clearly, you're also going to be dealing with some cons at any given time. And so what are they as we look out into next year? One sort of random stat is that the second year of a first term president tends to be a little rockier than the others. Right there. It's still positive. But as far as the presidential cycle goes, the second year of a first term president tends to come with a little more volatility. And what could be the setup for that? Inflation is obviously on everyone's mind. Whether it's transient or not, it is here in a way that it hasn't been for a very long time. And it's tough to say that even as we start to clear through some of the supply chain things and, and different areas that we're seeing clear up some, that inflation is suddenly going to go away. We, we don't expect that. So, so what happens if you get the market that corrects in some way, right? You've had three years in a row of 15% plus stock market returns in the S&P. If you get a, just a normal bump in the road, what does the Fed do if, one, you have a labor market in very good shape, and two, you got inflation running mid to high single digits, right? They're, they're telling you they're going to pull their foot off the gas right now already. And it's hard to turn around and see with any credibility that they can immediately start loosening up again, which means the market's going to have to figure out if it can stand on its own a bit more than it has. And that's a good thing, right? We, we want the market to be able to stand up without the Fed put that's been there forever. But it is something that remains a wonder what's going to happen when that happens, because we're also not cheap. The market is expensive by any different number of metrics you want to use. It has been helpful this year that with earnings growth as strong as it is, valuations have come down this year. And, and, and that's exactly what you want, because in the event that you get that aforementioned scenario, it is not unreasonable to see something where the market could just uh, revalue down a couple turns. And, and that wouldn't be totally unexpected. That remains one of those potential cons. But but hey, you know, that that's something that given earnings where they are, given consumer and economic strength where they is, where, where, where it is, we think that's more of a bump in the road type scenarios than, than anything else. So if you if you look at those cons, which is companies, market, consumer, balance sheets, earnings, all in a really good place, we think that that is superseding any of the things that you're seeing over on this sort of question mark and, and uh, potential con side looking out into the end of the year, but more importantly, as we get into next year. Thanks very much for watching today. We hope you'll check us out on the platform and thanks very much, Kirk. Thanks, Ward.